you know this is a learning experience i've never i've never thought that i would be in electoral politics and will be uh, fighting election and so on uh, but one interesting fact is that my decisions to contest the election it seems that i have taken the right decision because i wanted to change clean up the, some of this politics and go beyond this dirty politics and the kind of chaos that we have in the state those people who want to sustain this chaos they thrive on this chaos and confusion i think those people are very disturbed with my appearance in the electoral scene uh, and, and that's one of the reason why you must have noticed all my campaign has, has been sought to be disrupted uh, i'm the only candidate which has been targeted like this um there was a uh, subtle ways not to subtle ways actually they have come home with gun and all uh, they called me to come to some place and i was told by some other people already that i shouldn't go they are trying to force me to withdraw from election so i went underground not out of fear but tactical uh, so since they couldn't do it then there is a disruption there no campaign no nothing and stuff like that but you can see very well when the bjp organized dum dam se to kiya na bhi they did the big meeting nothing happened and they so they made they make it sure that you know you don't have a chance since they have done it there was no disruption in congress and i might start to organizing big time oh i forgot to tell the press my meeting permission has been cancelled see there is a story like this not only fires disruption has happened but the officials have not issued permission for me to hold meeting despite the fact that they have so there is a concerted effort to scuttle my voice uh, in uh, this is something that i think the press should take note of it i forgot to tell the uh, local newspaper uh, this aspect that my meeting permission have been uh, you know denied uh, you know that's a strange thing we are still we will be applying again because we have barely 3 4 hours on it today not a single big public meeting was held but despite their effort to suppress i'm sure that people's will will win over and you know, will have the final say after this election uh besides this you know uh, the congress has already issued a manifesto you are aware of that one uh and these bjp people have been commenting and misinterpreting it as if uh, you know this congress is trying to give separate administration to the cookies and so on uh because simply because there is a word in that manifesto called administrative settlement they don't realize that administrative settlement could mean so many things including rationalization of uh present existing administrative uh, uh you know jurisdiction and so on uh but as it turns out they have issued their manifesto there is not a single word on manipur despite the fact that we have gone through this terrible crisis violence for almost now 2 months uh it complements uh, prime minister's silence you know the absence of manipur in their manifesto is 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 complimenting uh, prime minister's modi silence on manipur so these are uh, some of the things that we have seen so in line with that uh, manifesto of the congress party i have my own personal agenda what what is that i want to do as a a uh, political leader as as people's representative as an mp i have certain uh, agenda um, uh, my mission is broad aim is to create a new political culture for a new manipur that's my slogan for a new political culture for a new manipur and in order to achieve that i have broken it down into certain specific agendas that i have the first one is quite obviously the to fix accountability for this current violence who has started how it has started and to pursue to fix accountability for this uh, as a part of that one crucial aspect is to fight for the justice for the internally displaced people i will try my best to ensure that they go back to their original home and live there again with dignity and well-being you know, they don't not simply going back there but also to to lead a life with dignity and well-being that would be my first priority until and unless we do that i will never accept that there is peace in the state uh and uh, 
you know, Manipur is such a small state in such a small communities uh, in, in, in 1.4 billion population. So we need certain constitutional safeguard. Uh, and so one of the things I would be pursuing is to look for such constitutional safeguard. One critical aspect of that would be to fight for the scheduled tribe status for the Metis. Uh, second is you know, the, 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 the kind of patterns of population growth that Manipur has it, we need to thoroughly investigate that and also adopt a population policy uh, uh, to, to mediate these irregularities and, and also take into account the socio-economic implication of the population growth. A part of this population policy would be to pursue for something to distinguish between citizens and non-citizens, uh, something like the NRC. You may not call it NRC, you might like to call any other name, but the fact remains that we must have something, a process, an institutional mechanism to distinguish what, who is a citizen and who is not a citizen. So that would be my uh, third priority. And the fourth one is, you know, because of this crisis, as you know, we have serious economic implications. Many startups have closed down. Uh, investment has shifted. As, uh, there's a flight of investment from the state. Uh, they've moved to nearby cities like Dimapur, Guwahati, and Kolkata, and thereby losing our economic opportunities of generating employment and so on. So we need to assess uh, the economic uh, implication of the current violence. And not only that, we must also look for ways and means uh, for uh, fostering economic development in the state. So I intend to create an economic development task force in order to achieve that one. Fifth one, you know, as a professional academics, uh, you know, many of the educational, quality education is concentrated in big metropolitan cities in this country. <coughs> and Mufashil towns and universities don't suffer from many lacunas. So I've seen this in my state. So I intend to launch a, a educational empowerment initiative. One model is I'm trying to create a online based virtual sort of a university, not to give uh, degrees, but to supplement and complement the kind of teaching that is happening here. I'd like to create a, a list of faculty from drawn from various institutes across the globe uh, and create a syllabus and you can run it for a month or two. People can involve with the nominal fee online and they can listen to it online. They can have these interactive sessions, uh, you know, lectures to be delivered by these faculty members from across the globe. So that's one of the uh, initiatives that I intend to do uh, once I become an MP. Six, you know that Manipur suffer from intercommunity estrangement, relationship, you know, among various groups of people. So I would like to initiate a dialogue and collaborative initiative. I'll try to take it. Uh, historically, we have, uh, you know, something like a cultural integration council led by former Maharaj Kumar Piyobhata and so on. I would like to revive some of those things on that line. And besides uh, the cultural and symbolic, on substantive level also, we need to work out uh, collaborative exercises for economic, uh, strengthening the economic standard of the people. Uh, and and our uh, you know relationship among communities. So that's that's my sixth agenda I have: intercommunity dialogue and collaboration initiative. Seven. Uh, you know one of the basic things in governance is accountability. You know corruptions and you know the employments and I need to launch a uh, citizens oversight functions to look after what the government is doing. They have created a post. How many posts were created? Who created? You know what kind of tenders was out? So I need to have this using RTI and so by invoking activists, we would like to have uh, information accessible to everybody, so the citizens are well informed. Uh, and uh, that kind of uh, governance, accountability, and oversight initiative, I would like to, uh, I will be initiating it. Uh, and the eighth one is that you know our indigenous art and cultural integration. There are a lot of similarities in rituals and and worldviews among various communities. We don't know each other very well. So I would like to uh, you know, initiate a, a indigenous art and cultural integration, a cultural policy and intercultural dialogue and so on. So that is the other one that I intend to do. Uh, this ninth one is 
you know, like the Satyo Committee, I would like to assess uh, different groups and communities, their socioeconomic status, to see whether any of these communities are lagging behind and what is the reason for that and what can be done about it. So I, I will institute an assessment or press to the government to do it. If they don't do it, it will be taken initiative on that side. Tenth, uh, Manipur, right from the merger days, we suffer from the government of India trying to look at us from a security and military lens all the time. And I would like them to look at us as a civil, as a civilian, you know, as a governance based on citizens, not as a security or military angle. So that's a kind of a discourse that I would like to, uh, I would initiate to shift, uh, you know, the discourses about Manipur and, and the Northeast. Eleven is, you know, uh, we have a uh, image, Manipur, even if we are a small state. Uh, and, and, I, and, and, but unfortunately, a lot of people have misgivings about our state as well in the northeast and the rest of the country. So I would like to launch this brand Manipur afresh so that we, we gain that kind of uh, uh, respect from the rest of the world. <coughs> Twelfth is the <coughs> administrative reform. You know, a lot of... Uh, administrative arrangement in the state is float. I give you one example, you know, uh, in, in Vishnu district or Thawal district. Do you see that Thawal College, there is hill and there are villages. The district headquarters in the so-called hill areas, though all those people in villages, they will do marketing in Thawal, they go to hospital in Thawal, their education in Thawal. But why is that? Simply because it is a little elevated, you put it in the hill district. They travel like this to get signature from the DC to Thawal to Imphal, then Kanga Tombi, and then Kangkopi. It's irrational to do that, right? So I think we need to rationalize for the, to foster economic development. There, there is a need for uh, you know, uh, land reforms and so on in the state. So a lot of these administrative reforms one must initiate it. I'll be working for those things. Last but not the less, India is a union of states, so I would like to work for fostering and strengthening Manipur's position under India's federal polity. You know, that's one of the uh, you know, things that I would initiate it. Whatever I can do to, to, to secure a, a respectable and honorable positions of Manipur within the Indian federal polity. That's a 13-point agenda which is what I think require for us to create a new political culture and a new Manipur. That's the 13-point agenda I have, which I intend to do it. You will see these things. This is a process. You will see that I will initiate that. Many of the results you can see within five years. But some of them is a long-drawn process. But you will see the, uh, the ball gets rolling uh, during this five years itself. And I'll complete all these 13 tasks one way or the other once and if I get elected as an MP. Thank you.